Today on Component Close-Up we have a chip which at first I thought wouldn't be very interesting. It's an EEPROM. And I thought, oh, everyone's seen EEPROMs. They'll see them in their BBC Micros and other 8-bit home computers. Then I realised it was in fact 2019 and not everybody's got a BBC Micro with EEPROMs in it. So, the EEPROM, the Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. This is a chip that stores data. It's a memory, but it's programmed using an EEPROM programmer, a special uh, electronic gadget, and it's erased using an ultraviolet erasing lamp. So you have a box with an ultraviolet lamp in it, and that ultraviolet light shines through the quartz window on top of the chip. Just bring this up here and let it focus. So that window, you can see the chip itself through the round window, um, it's not actually glass, it's quartz to allow the ultraviolet light to pass through. Ordinary glass wouldn't be transparent to ultraviolet. And you can see inside there the actual silicon, the chip itself, the bond wires, um, all visible. And in this particular case, it's an AM2716DC, so that's a 16 kilobit EEPROM or 2K bytes, so this contains 2048 bytes of data. What's in there, I'm not quite sure. It could be erased at this point. I've labelled it E, so I can tell this one uh, apart from the others which I'm working with. Normally, because uh, it takes a little while, it can take 20 minutes to erase them, so you'd normally have a, a, a few EEPROMs available to program up with your, your test program, put it into your machine, try it out, and then go around again. Uh, go and get a cup of coffee while you do the erasing. So this one, in a 24-pin package, is 2048 bytes, 2K. Now that's by no means a large one. Here's another one. This one is a TM2718AD-15. That's the speed of it, 100 in there seconds. Uh, in a 28-pin package, it needs more pins because it's got more address lines. Eight data lines and you can see in the package there enough address lines for, in this case, a 27128 is 16K. So this contains 16384 bytes of memory, either data or program. Again, you can see the bond wires in there. And you can see that the structure of the chip seems to be in two two uh, banks. There's something down the middle, and there's a rectangular memory array on each side of that on the chip itself. Quite hard to get that in focus, but I think you can see the bond wires in there. Again, this isn't by any means the largest uh, EEPROM available. Here's an even bigger one. This one is in a 32-pin package. Uh, these are all in DIL packages. Uh, this is a 27C4001, the C meaning CMOS, made by ST. Um, the chip itself isn't much bigger, it isn't any, any different in size at all than the other ones. The density has got greater, and again the bond wires are visible, and the fact that it's two banks of memory, one each side of some kind of central addressing structure on the chip there, same quartz window. Um, so if it's a 27C4001, that's 512K, or half a megabyte of data or program in one chip. The device that programs them, the EEPROM programmer, would have a socket rather like this one, which is a zero insertion force socket into which the chip can be placed, and then locked down. Once that's locked in there, the programmer would program the chip. To erase it, there's an ultraviolet light in a box, and that box is normally opaque with a safety interlock because the ultraviolet light is harmful to the eyes. Um, so there you have it. That's the EEPROM. Today's component close-up. A blast from the past, from the 1980s. 
something which would have been very, very common and a familiar sight to anybody with an 8-bit computer, but nowadays it's one of those things that's been completely superseded by chips like the flash memory. And whenever you do a firmware update, you're most likely erasing and reprogramming a device not a million miles from a chip like this, but electrically erased and electrically reprogrammed in circuit. So there we have it, Compu component close-up, the EEPROM.